I, I, I want to take just a few minutes with you here before uh, we get sent on, on our way into the lobbies and more of the fun and conversation that you'll have out there. And I want to take a moment and talk to you about where we sense God is leading us next. We, uh, last fall, got together with a number of the leaders from New Life. Some of you were there. It was called the Green Dot. And we just wanted to listen to what you sensed God was saying to you about where the church needed to go next. I think it's important. Don't you agree it's important for us to listen sometimes? My wife, told, she said, I couldn't remember when she said it. I wasn't totally listening. But anyways, no, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Um, and, and so it's important for us to listen. And so uh, we went away. And, did, and I, I wanted to just talk to you about wh- where it is that we sense God is leading us as a church and then how it is that we can do our part. Because I don't know if you know this, but did you know that the church needs you? I, 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 without you, we're missing a part of the body. And without you fully actively energized, and I don't know what's happened that maybe de-energized you or if you have never found your fit or whatever, but until you get fully uh, energized and finding your fit and part of this, we're missing something in the church. And so I'm hoping that today something will happen. Um, I was trying to figure out how to do this, and I thought, well, maybe I'll draw this for you. I'm not the best um, artist, uh, but stay with me on this. I I, I really believe that that this really starts with Jesus. And so I'm going to do this. That's a J. I don't know exactly what it looks like, so that's what I went with. And he's calling each one of us. This right here is you. And when he calls you, you'll notice this. He's also calling other people as well. No one does the mission alone. And as he calls you, you together with others are called called out ones. Did you know that? And did you know there's a word for the term called out ones? Do you know what that Greek word? It's ekklesia. It actually is the word church. So if you've ever wondered, wow, that people becoming a church thing, that is so, where does that come from? Um, From the beginning? From what the word means? Um, And so Jesus is calling you and others. And if you're wondering, what is Jesus saying to me? I think it's two words. I think Jesus is saying to you these two words. You know what those two words are? Follow me. It's follow me. That's right. <laughs> these guys are way in front of the class. Follow me. <laughs> and uh, this right here is, is Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And as we follow him together, we are actually his disciples. And he tells us, um, I, I'm going to disciple you, but then I'm going to give you guys a mission as well because I want you to be disciples making disciples. And if you read the Bible uh, much, you know that's Matthew 28, 19. So you have all these disciples making disciples who are following Jesus. And, well, what are we supposed to be doing? We're following him. Uh, well, I believe that God, Jesus is calling all of us in our own ways to share the gospel. And we are to share the gospel with everyone, everywhere. You're like, well, where, where, where did you get that one? Uh, that's Mark 16, 15. And some of us kind of feel like, well, I just don't know um, if I have what it takes to be one of those people who's sharing the gospel of how this is how the gospel is good news to me, or I'm not much of a speaker, or, you know, it actually, actions are pretty powerful too. And not only that, God said he'd give you help. And that help is actually uh, the Holy Spirit. And you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you're going to be his witness. In fact, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. I mean, you're going to start right where you're at, starting right where you're at, and you're going to be one of those people who's sharing the gospel with people. And as we share the gospel with more and more people, what happens is this. More and more people come to know God and his love, and people's lives are healed, and this world is changed. It's God's plan to change this world. But what we see is this is um, when we started the church, New Life, we, of course, the church started long before us, and God's been doing all kinds of stuff. But did you guys know there's like 14 of us in the living room at one point? The week before we launched, one of our leaders looked at me and said, Wes, I don't want to burst your bubble, but what if nobody comes? Who's glad we uh, didn't quit right there? Okay. No, that's all right. I, I noted some of you didn't raise your hands. <laughs> okay, that's right. Uh, and we sense that we were called to what we're going to say, the 185,000 who aren't a part of a church anywhere in Kitsap. 
And you say, well, why there? Well, we're going to start here and be involved with what God's doing everywhere, but we should at least be called here. You're just like, well, why? Did you know that that our area is the number one most unchurched in the state of Washington, number eight in the USA. So at least some of us should feel called here. Don't you agree? And who knows better how to share the gospel with the people who live here than maybe the people who live here. And one of the things you'll notice as you drive around this beautiful peninsula and all the way to Bainbridge and around and, oh, you know, you hook canal and down towards Gig Harbor and South Kids Ave, um, is um, it, everywhere is a little bit different, isn't it? And everyone's a little bit different. And so we've found that over the years, it's been important for us as we share the gospel to know that not one size fits all. Some of us feel more comfortable in larger settings, and some of us are like looking around going, this is really big. And so I think of it like this. See if you can stay with me on it. I think of it like, okay, you have a a hotel. This is my hotel. Okay. And uh, you've got a bed and breakfast. This is my bed and breakfast. And then you have a guest house. So the, the hotel is, um, I'm going to call this a training center. And uh, I'm going to say the training center is probably, sized-wise, about 1,000 to 5,000 people. And some of us have been in one of those churches before, and you're probably not setting up and tearing down, are you? Uh, other than that, uh, we like this bed and breakfast. And uh, I'm going to call this a campus. And it probably feels best when it's like 300 to 800. You can have a little bit less, but then it's like, wow, we need more help. And you can have a little bit more, and you're going, we need to move. Okay? And uh, then the, you have this guest house, and I'm going to call this a house church. And a house church is a lot like probably 40 to 70 people uh, with a clear leader, kind of the house church lead that provides pastoral care, discipleship for all the people who are part of that house church. And uh, did you notice that um, these aren't the only, but God's working through all of these all over the world. Have you noticed that? And what if we did all of these here on the peninsula? What would that look like? You see, all of these have community groups, don't they? People who are gathering together in groups of two or more. Some of these groups Uh, grow into like, you know, 29 people and you're going next door to get the neighbor's uh, lawn chairs, Ken Riley. Um, And some of them will become house churches, but um, some of them won't. And some house churches will become, you know, uh, uh, campuses, but some of them won't and some of them don't want to. And some of them will, campuses will become training centers, but primarily that's probably where there's a bigger population base and some roads kind of all go there. Okay. Uh, Now, looking at this, one of the things I noticed was, you're not going to get all of these people in the one facility, but you don't actually have to. In fact, uh, if you study this, people who study this say that there's tipping points. A tipping point is when there's just so much momentum with something that it seems like you can't go anywhere and someone's not talking to you about it. And they say, that, like, if you study this, tipping point for 185,000 people is, uh, oh, it's probably right around 30,000. Which, if you look at people who study that, they would say probably 15,000 people Uh, who gather together for worship is a tipping point in a community that size. Well, interestingly, I mean, just last weekend, there's 3,500 people. What would it look like? And you can see it starts to become possible. But there's some steps that we're going to have to take to not just get bigger, but also smaller. And what would happen if all of us are involved in following Jesus, making disciples who make disciples, and sharing the gospel with everyone everywhere. How many needs could these people all meet in Jesus' name? How many needs? I want you to reach out and grab that envelope, pull it out. Inside, there's a thing that says greater things. And one of the things that we wanted to do is this, is we knew as you're pulling that out that we are called to make at the grassroots, make disciples who make disciples. That's what this is about. We actually even created a little book. It's in my hand. It's called Mission 7. It's in the lobby. 
we have about 500 of these, and then they'll be gone. We may have to print more. Um, we'll also have it electronically for those of us who carry a phone around and we just want to boom, pull it up. But we envision people, whether they're in a training center, a campus, or a house church, that are meeting in community groups, sitting down one-on-one or one-on-two or one-on-three, pulling out one of these Mission 7 books. And as you open it up, you'll see that there's seven missions uh, that are part of this. And I just wanted to walk through some of this real quick. The first one says, follow Jesus wherever he leads. Where's Jesus leading you? And talk about that. Can you see talking about that with somebody? The second one says, do whatever it takes to gather with followers of Jesus. How big of a priority is us getting together? Number three says, see Jesus in the face of everyone you meet. We think that compassion starts there. Mission four, tell people how the gospel is good news for you. People love good news, and when it's good news, nobody has to tell you to share it, do they? We couldn't even stop you. Mission five, give outrageously to the mission. Over the years, this church has grown Why? Not off of one gift. It's been people who sacrifice. What is Jesus asking you to sacrifice? Mission six, commit to forgiveness in all your relationships. Wow. Every time I look at that one, I think, okay, it's time to grow. (laughs) Number seven, make another disciple. What would happen if we were disciples making disciples, following Jesus, sharing the gospel, meeting needs? Well, what are some of these needs? Well, these needs that we have here on Greater Things, this is a campaign that we're going to have go for two years. And you're like, wow, we're doing a campaign, a giving campaign. All of it is around on the mission giving. So this is your on the mission giving. And all of it is based around meeting needs. Um, So we wrote some of these down based on the stuff you said. The first one we wrote down is this, is I love my city projects. The first thing we're going to do, we just feel called to do things, to show the love of Jesus. We think that good works opens up people's hearts to the good news. And if you flip over, it has a number of I love my city projects. I, I'll mention some of them there. Uh, one of them we want to do is this, is whenever someone gets out of juvie, there's a program where a mentor will sit down with them and get them started in the right direction. We want to buy their first lunch. How cool is that? Uh, for foster kids who graduate out of uh, the uh, Youth for Christ programs, what's next? We want to be the people who come alongside them when they've graduated, say, we're going to help you transition, to in- you get into the workforce, and that you can uh, build jo- you know, the resume building and job skills, and we want to partner with you on that. Um, see where it says leaders are readers? Uh, the way they figure out how many jail cells they need 10 years from now is how many third graders are below reading level now. We already have the first volunteer. Dan Sertall from the CK campus is volunteering in Central Kitsap, and he has a few students. They're below reading level. His goal by the end of the year is to get them to reading level. I wonder if there's 100 or 200 people who feel called to that. Uh, We want to go, uh, as of last week, Bainbridge Island got on board. As of last week, all of our campuses are out of school. Wouldn't it be great to go to all these principals and say, what's one need that we could meet that you don't think you could do? Wouldn't that be cool to meet that need over the next two years? And these are just some of them. There's lots of them there. But we feel called to do these different things. The first thing we're going to do. Secondly, expand community groups at all campuses. We know that discipleship is our, that was the number one thing that was brought up at our green dot. Disciple making in community and to invest in our community groups because it can't just be that we're just reaching out. Uh, We've got to be building strong relationships. Number three, strengthen marriages and families. We're doing our first ever marriage event on May 1st called Fight Night. You're like, I could go to that. <laughs> and it's for people who are married or people thinking about getting married. And uh, we also, uh, we, we just want to be the number one place that people look for if their marriage is struggling or it's doing good, but it could be better. And then we, we want to also invest, number four, into great kids and youth ministries. And so, uh, in fact, we need, we're going to launch the uh, Bremerton Youth Ministry this year. So that's something we want to invest in. So those are four things that we really feel called to do. In over two years, that would take about $7 million. And you're like, wow, that's a lot. Well, it is a lot. Um, It's also what we've budgeted already. 
So uh, honestly, if we do what we're doing now and nobody drops off in their giving, we can do that. Who thinks we should do that? Yeah, I knew you got. We're the core. This is the core here. That would meet a baseline, baseline goal. Uh, the next set of goals is called momentum goals. And these are needs that we could meet beyond the ones that we budgeted for. And um, they're going to take some extra giving. Uh, one of them says help heal the world opportunities. There's a number of them, but one of them we want to do is come alongside Tom Cornell, walk in the light, and we want to see that hospital built in Rialo in Burkina Faso. I've been there. It would be the first hospital in that area. Uh, secondly, uh, we would like to come alongside people who are coming out of human trafficking and build a home of hope so that women and children can step out of the brothels and have a new life. Doesn't that sound like that would be worth it? So uh, we want to upgrade our kids' spaces at all campuses, all environments. Some of our campuses, your kids' uh, uh, space looks a lot like it did a number of years ago. Number seven, we want to upgrade that. Seven, uh, community pastors at all campuses focus on discipleship and pastoral care. We want to see that there are community pastors, they're, they're focused on pastoral care. They're focused Monday through Saturday. And that's just, that's their gift. You'll notice that our campus leads are wired a little bit different than a community pastor. A campus lead will be talking to you, and they're like, like you know, talking really, and they're like, let's do it, and what do you want to do? And the community pastor's like, can we sit down? Could we meet? Let's talk. Just go there. Guess which one I am. <laughs> Number eight, relaunch Bainbridge and the North Mason campus. We relaunched Bainbridge, Bainbridge last week. Uh, I'll be there this next Sunday. Uh, I will say uh, we do need to still pay for some of that stuff. Also, the North Mason campus is a brand new school, new performing arts center, new commons. Boom, let's go there this fall and uh, be ready for a relaunch in North Mason, huh? So uh, those are things that would take a little bit more. You say, well, man, $9 million, it's $2 million more. How would we do that? Uh, do you know how we do that? That would be if everyone who already comes to new life and already gives decides to give $50 more a month. That's what it would be. Now, some will give less, some will give more. I mean, kingdom math is different than West math. West math, West math is like, well, if everyone did this, but God's math is like, you do this, you do this, you do that, and then like, you don't see this coming in, boom. Sound effects are free. <laughs> Dreams. Uh, number nine, launch new campuses and create more space for people to worship. Uh, Mark got up here. We announced the Bremerton campus last state of church. Now he's up here. There's a whole team of people, all new people being reached, a bunch of people. Well, you know what? I bet you right now, sitting out there, there's some of your hearts that are going, I got an X. I know an area that needs a campus. Okay, well, about, we know it's about $70,000 just for the equipment to get going. Um, take steps to move a few campuses from rentals to long-term leases or facilities. At some point, uh, a couple campuses are in areas that need to move to a training center. And one of those is Central Kitsap. Uh, and we purchased some land some years ago. And we've just been super duper patient, haven't we? And many of you have been given faithfully. My family's been given faithfully. Thank you for doing that and not dropping off. Here's a picture of something that we've drawn. Um, we, we have land. We, we, we drew this up. We even have more finished pictures, but I like this one better. And uh, it's about 10 to $12 million to do that. And we just thought, we need something more strategic than that. And we're being patient, and we just believe that God knows the right time, the right way, the right, and so we're going back to the drawing board on some of this stuff, but we need a more strategic price, and we need some more people to step forward. But that's something that we'd be able to do right there. And by the way, if you want to know where the land is, there's a brand new so shopping center being done. Uh, have you seen that going up? Yeah, we're across the street. Um, number 11, free marriage crisis counseling. How cool would it be to be able to say, if somebody's marriage is about to blow up and they're like, we are done, but we re they make a phone call to the church and we say, listen, drop everything. We have paid for you to have a weekend away with, with trained professionals and we're gonna, like, we're, gonna be, we're gonna hold your hands through this and if you want to, if you decide to stay in this, then God's gonna heal this marriage. Uh, number 12, send youth leaders to summer camp for free. You're like, well, what's that doing on the dream side? Well, listen, uh, it costs money, and let me just tell you, right now, here's what we do. Because we have a lot of teenagers going, and it needs a lot of leaders. We say to the leaders, listen, uh, don't work, get off work, don't get paid, pay money, uh, go be with the kids all week, and don't sleep. <laughs> in Jesus' name, and I'll show up for a couple of days, and I'm paid, but it's fine. I believe in you. 
And so uh, many of us over the years, we've scholarship, and I have, and, and many of you have. But uh, what a dream that we'd be able, $30,000 would just send them all for free every year. Um, and number, the last one I put, big dream, train 70 fishermen tax collectors. You're like, who are those? Well, just think 12 disciples, okay? 12, to launch house, church, um, house churches. Launch house churches. I just think there's some of you that are going to be wired to launch a house church. You'll keep your job. I see us, for people who have full-time employment, we would come alongside and add a day a week because of your responsibility. You would plant a house church that's a part of newlife.tv. So some of you out there say, well, what do you do? I lead a campus. What do you do? I lead a house church. What do you do? I lead a training center. And what are all of us doing? Following Jesus, making disciples, and spreading the gospel. We're not all going to fit into all of the schools that are in the area. And some of our communities would do better with house churches. Some of our communities would do better where, with training centers. You're like, well, where are those places? Well, where do they put a Costco? Oh. That would probably be about $100,000 to train those fish, to find those 70, to fund them, to go after this. And so you can see that's another $3 million to go from needs to dreams. And you're like, well, how would we do that? And this is West math. This isn't like kingdom of God math. But in West math, it'd be like, okay, well, if everyone who already comes and already gives decided, I'm going to add $50 to what I give, and I'll find someone else who will give $50 every single month. <laughs> that would get us close, <laughs> but not quite there. What I'd like you to do is this. This is the core. When I think of state of the church, I think this is the core. This is where we start. We're going to take the next eight weeks at our campuses and we're going to, um, as you open up your homes, we're going to sit down and talk through where it is that God's speaking to you, where you want to be involved, what you want to be a part of, who it is that you think wants to be a part of this as well. But this is the starting point. This is the core. This is where we have to start. Leaders go first. So what I did is this, is I took out my giving pledge because I need to do this. And so I looked at this and um, you can see if you pull this out and the band's going to come, they'll do a song here. You'll have some time. Uh, but I put my name and then uh, for my family, for my wife and I, I thought, okay, uh, it says start. I would like to start automating my giving. Um, I already do that, so I didn't mark that box. Um, it says continue. Uh, count on my already automated giving. I marked continue because that's what we do. And then there's a place that says add. I give permission to add to my already automated giving. And so um, some, some of you out there, you thought, well, I don't know if I could give to this, but you heard me talk about $50. And many of you thought, I could give $50 a month to that. Some of us could give more. God's calling my wife and I to give more. And for us to give more, I actually went through our budget and I go, there's not more, so here's what I have to do. I have to take some stuff out. I found four things to take out. Two things completely and two things to cut back on. And you're like, well, what are those? Well, you tell me yours and I'll tell you mine. <laughs> some of you are going to mark pledge only. Pledge only are for people who say, you know, um, I don't automate my giving because that's not how I give. Some of us, we just really like to bring our giving as we come to worship, and that's how it's, it's powerful for us. Some of us, you don't get paid that way. You kind of get paid pretty sporadically, and you don't know what comes in when. And so it makes more sense for you to just say, this is just a goal that God's put on my heart to give as a pledge over two years. It might come in um, all at once. It might come in a little bit at a time. It might come in through stock or real estate or a different way, but you'll mark that. Um, and then there's a place to put a single gift between now and May 2nd uh, because we would like to do some outrageous moments in our gatherings where we meet some needs. I'd love to be able to find out, hey, Mission House has a need. Boom, we got your back. Yeah. I'd love to be able to do that. And we can do that if everyone's given to the mission. If you're here and you need help because you're like, I would love to do this, but I'm not in financially a place to be able to do this. We want to say to you, listen, we're here for each other. Mark the box, I need help to win with my money because all of us have been there. And mark that box and we have a whole team that's just ready to come alongside of you and say, hey, let's do this together. But would you take a few minutes as the team has a song they're gonna do and um, just pray about what it is that God's gonna ask you to do. And if you want to, fill this out on this side, the pledge amount. On the back side, there's a place that if you want to give tonight, you can. This looks like what your envelope every single week, our automated giving. If you want to start automating, then you fill this all the way out. And uh, it, it could be $50 a month. God might be calling you to give $5 a month. God might be calling you to give a large gift that would be a big sacrifice that would be a game changer. I just know this. When Jesus wanted to point out heavy sacrifice, he pointed out a woman that gave two cents. 
I want in this group right here, leaders go first, 100% involvement. Pray and ask God what he wants you to do. And I'll be back in a moment.